welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, thanks so much for joining me. Maybe I should be saying good day, mate for today's video instead of welcome because we are discussing Australian warships and the Hunter class frigate. Now I have a lot of envy for Australia's Navy and their procurement process, particularly with BA systems, uh, because they are making their own warships very quickly in the grand scheme of things. Now we're going to get into a deep dive of this uh, particular warship, but before we do, let me know in the comments section what your favorite class of warship in the modern configuration is. And also in the comments section, give me the reasons why. I love having a little bit of a discussion with you guys as to what your favorite ship is. I'm not a Navy guy. I've never really had a huge connection to the Navy. My father in in his world loves the Navy. Uh, he's not Navy himself, but he loves, you know, the old school uh, Napoleonic levels of ships and ship of the line and all that sort of stuff and uh, has a strong fascination for warships. And I think with Australia making this incredible hunter class frigate, they're doing a lot of what I wish Canada would actually do. I know Canada is working on its own plan, but, uh, you know, it's interesting times that we have here in the naval configuration of Canada. And I think Australia Australia is in a similar boat, but they are probably 10 steps ahead of us here in Canada. Um, so let's get into why this uh, particular ship is so fascinating, and more particularly, how it's being built, which I think is actually more interesting than the ship itself, because ships take a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of manpower, and of course, huge amounts of money and infrastructure to actually produce. And I think BA Systems has perfected this in the new configuration of basically building ships, particularly in Southern Australia for the Hunter class frigate. And this video will go over a little bit more as to the uh, technicalities of how that happens, which I find quite fascinating. But we're gonna go over a bit of an overview of the ship first to give you a little bit of an understanding of how she came to be, and then we'll get into its construction. So Australia's Hunter class frigates are part of a $45 billion C5000 Future Frigate Program, designed to replace the aging Anzac class frigates. These ships are built around the British Type 26 Global Combat Ship Design, ensuring superior anti-submarine warfare, air defense, and surface combat capabilities. Now, the Royal Australian Navy has commissioned nine of these vessels, making it one of the largest naval acquisitions and projects in Australian history. And this is why it is such an important thing to focus on is how are they building nine of them so quickly in the climate of how things are going globally, particularly for financing an economy for today? Well, one of the primary objectives, though, of this program is to future-proof Australia's naval fleet, allowing the country to maintain a regional strategic advantage against emerging threats. Each frigate will be equipped with the Aegis Combat System, the CEA FAR-2 Phased Array Radar, and a cutting-edge sonar and missile defense system. The program is a joint effort between the Australian government, BA Systems and the Osborne Naval Shipyard in South Australia. This is a huge venture. The first Hunter class frigate is expected to be launched in the early 2030s with fully operational capabilities in the 2040s, which may seem like a long time, but in the reality of building so many ships at this level of advancement is pretty impressive. With the introduction of these warships, Australia aims to enhance its Blue Water Navy operations and secure maritime trade routes in an increasingly contested Indo-Pacific region. The Hunter-class frigates are essentially for maintaining Australia's naval dominance and securing its maritime interests. It's pretty obvious, but we have to remember that 85% of Australia's trade is transported by sea, and ensuring safe passage through the Indo-Pacific is critical for economic stability and actually their national security. One of the main objectives for the Hunter class is to excel and perfect anti-submarine warfare. With increasing Chinese naval activity in the Pacific, these frigates should provide the basic enhanced detection and tracking for the Australian Navy and engagement capabilities against enemy submarines if it came to it. They do have what's been perceived as supposed to be a ultra quiet operation with a powerful sonar system and advanced torpedo countermeasures, making them pretty good for ASW operations. Beyond ASW, the Hunter class is designed to support joint coalition operations with allies like the United States and the United Kingdom, although nowadays I'm not too sure how that's going to be. Their integration with the Aegis combat system allows them to function seamlessly alongside US and NATO naval forces, providing enhanced ballistic missile defense and cooperative engagement capabilities. And the Royal Australian Navy really is moving towards a highly integrated fleet. Would I say modular? Maybe modular. But these frigates will play a vital role in multi-domain warfare, including electronic warfare, cyber operations, and missile defense. This makes the Hunter class not just a powerful naval asset for Australia, but in the grand scheme of global capability, a bit of a strategic deterrent. 
Now, it's based on the 26 combat ship, which is, uh, you know, I have to be very clear, I'm a bit British biased, is an incredible ship. It would probably be one of my favourite modern warfare combatants, but it's been customised to meet Australia's specific operational needs, and these modifications include the integration of Australian-made sensors and weapon systems, which I have a lot of respect for. Utilising their own native-produced systems is something I think the global defence industry needs to get better at. Each vessel will measure approximately 150 meters in length and have a displacement of 8,800 tons and will be powered by a combined diesel electric or gas or cod lag propulsion system. This allows for higher speeds, greater fuel efficiency and quieter operation, which is crucial for anti-submarine warfare. The frigates will be armed with a cell of 48 Mark 41 vertical launch system missiles for the standard missile 2 tubes and an ESSM Block II surface-to-air missile, a 5-inch Mark 45 naval gun, and MU-90 torpedoes for ASW missions. They will also carry naval strike missiles, providing a long-range surface attack capability. But to zero in on the most groundbreaking feature, it is the CFAR-2 Phased Array Radar, developed by CA Technologies. This radar system provides an unparalleled situational awareness, tracking multiple targets simultaneously and detecting stealth threats from air, land, and sea. Of course, like most modern things, artificial intelligence and autonomous capabilities is also being heavily explored with this ship, ensuring that the hunter-class frigates remain adaptable to new emerging threats well into the future. But let's talk about that construction process at the Osborne Naval Shipyard, and is a thing of beauty in my personal opinion. The Osborne Naval Shipyard in South Australia is the epicenter of the hunter-class construction. This shipyard has undergone $535 million worth of upgrades to accommodate a modern warship building technique and setup, including robotic welding, digital shipbuilding, and modular construction. And this is truly modular in its construction. This thing is produced basically like a giant Lego kit, and it's very impressive. The construction process follows a block build approach where different sections of the ship are built separately before being assembled. Now this isn't new, but what I will say is that this particular shipyard has increased its efficiency and quality control, reducing construction time hugely. In June 2024, the first steel was cut for the lead ship, marking the official start of the Hunter Class program. The first vessel is expected to launch in the early 2030s, with a new ship being delivered every two years until all nine are completed. That is a very impressive timeline, folks, for a ship of this class, complexity, and size. And this process also involves rigorous testing and validation phases as the ships are being produced, ensuring that every aspect of the ship meets operational standards. The collaboration between BA Systems, ASC Shipbuilding, and the Australian government ensures that these frigates are built to the highest specifications with minimal risk of cost, overruns, or delays, and more importantly, is produced by Australians. That is a huge deal in all of this. So let's have a little bit of a look at the promo video from BA Systems as to how they produce this beautiful ship. The Hunter Class Frigate is a highly capable multi mission warship designed to support anti-submarine warfare, air defense, and general purpose operations anywhere on the world's oceans. Six frigates will be built by BAE Systems Maritime Australia at the Osborne Naval Precinct, South Australia. These world-class facilities represent one of the largest investments of their type in Australian history and are being outfitted with the most progressive digital advanced manufacturing technologies to ensure a continued sovereign capability for constructing complex warships. The shipyard is designed with a steel-in, ship-out capability. All steel arrives to the stockyard and is processed in the steel fabrication hall. Raw steel is prepped for construction through a blast and primer painting process. Plate information is marked on the steel using a printer. Cut lines are then automatically marked on the steel according to the digital design. Using specialised equipment, steel is cut into the plates and profiles and prepped for assembly. Panels and profiles are consolidated to create stiffened decks and bulkheads.
field operators with specialist machines bend and deform thick plates and profiles into complex shapes. Through a combination of automated and traditional methods, depths and bulkheads are assembled along a production line. The resulting structure is known as a unit. After dimensional assembly checks, units are loaded onto self-propelled modular transports. These completed units are then delivered to the block consolidation hall for assembly. Units are rotated from an inverted or upside down orientation. Being able to perform hot work at both orientations allows installation of pre-outfitting assemblies such as pipe hangers, studs and equipment seats through the most ergonomic and labour-saving processes. Groups of units are welded together to form blocks. Post-assembly, each block is taken to the blast and paint hole. Inside this giant chamber, blocks are pressure washed, dried, grit blasted, painted and cured. This ensures that the steel structures will last for decades in harsh marine environments. In addition to main steel construction, the rest of the yard is dedicated to administration, parts fabrication, electrical works and the thousands of other tasks that are required to build complex warships. Prepped blocks are moved to the block fitting and erection hall for cold outfitting. Piece by piece, the ship is consolidated from the keel up, installing major equipment along the way. The sheer size of this building allows almost the entire ship to be consolidated inside. Final consolidation will occur on the hard stand with the attaching of the mast. Compartments will be outfitted and remaining ship systems will be installed. Each frigate will float off into the Port River and moved alongside. Here, the final outfitting, integration and set to work of the ship and her equipment will occur before being formally delivered to the Royal Australian Navy. And included with each frigate will be its digital counterpart with the traceability of parts, suppliers and construction processes, which will assist in maintaining, sustaining and upgrading the vessels throughout their life and beyond. So there you have it folks, just an incredible process of how such large ships are produced basically in mass. This is, you know, production manufacturing and it's one of its highest scales I think that you can get when you're building ships, actual warships. The level of, you know, manufacturing, design, uh, engineering and uh, I guess collaboration in how they produce a piece of equipment like this is, is incredibly vast. I can't even imagine being a project manager on something like this. I currently am a project manager in my in my civilian career uh, and something of this scale would just be absolutely incredible to manage and, and I'm sure it brings its own challenges but Australia is really hitting it out of the park here. I mean this is a massive venture for many other companies that are getting involved, lots of different contracts, but the way in which they've kind of set up a very lean, uh, concise process to put all this stuff together really kind of fascinates me. Uh, and I think it's gonna bring them, you know, ships that are gonna be on target. Uh, of course, like any defense contract, it's clearly going to cost a lot more money and probably a lot more money than they originally had planned. I'm sure there's a lot of politics that I'm missing here and Australians are screaming at the computer screens right now. But for me, uh, it does look like ships are being built. That's, to me, uh, a massive win. I mean, is it over time? Um, you know, sort of you pass a deadline? Is it taking too long? Maybe. I mean, it's, it's just going to happen. But the mere fact that ships are going together and they're building their new fleet for the Australian Navy, that's a big win, I think, for Australia and good for you guys. <laughs> Honestly, I, uh, I'm very jealous of the Australian Navy right now. I think you have uh, capacity that something I think that the uh, Canadian uh, Navy could certainly benchmark from. And uh, you should be pl very proud, in all honesty, of, of your fleet. And of course, I think every military has its challenges, but the mere fact 
that uh, you're getting ships produced and your new fleet is coming, uh, be it that it could be a lot longer than maybe expected, a lot more costly, then, you know, that's going to happen. I don't really get into the bureaucracy of how defense contracts work, but you're getting new ships. Are they the best ships in the world? I don't know. I mean, the Type 26 and the Hunter class is, I guess, still somewhat subject to trials uh, and, and battle testing, but uh, at the end of the day, from what I've seen, it's a ship that's clearly going to support Australian needs very, very much so. As you can see, there's a lot of opportunity uh, for these ships to do a lot of really important things, not just on a combat perspective, but saving Australian lives when it comes to natural disasters and things. These ships do a lot of work, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the Hunter class can do in the future. So what's your thoughts on this ship and the production of this ship? Do you think it's uh, you know efficient? Do you think maybe the contract's over overdue or is taking too long i don't know i'd love to know your opinions in the comments section below let me know what your thoughts are on this uh, particular project and program and thanks again for joining me of course uh, if you did enjoy today's video leave me a like click the subscribe button and i hope to see you on the next video massive shout out to those who have been financially supporting my channel through patreon and paypal and just the super chats donation it really does mean a lot to me uh and uh, i guess i will bid you all farewell and uh you know good day mate have a good one I'm a terrible Australian, I'm sorry. <laughs> Take care, guys.